This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. Okay, welcome to Off the Break Podcast. <laughs> I'm Cody, and with me are Kyle and Eric. Hello. <laughs> we're just <laughs> probably doing some pre-discussion while we hit play or um, record record i'm trying to give eric a helping hand <laughs> with the because he has a lot of movies to talk about well, and i usually mean trying you to have like him... seen movies that and we kind of like go back and forth like what yeah. do you think what yeah. do you think but now, but it's, now like... it's all on eric it's gonna be eric's show today <laughs> yeah i don't like it <laughs> yeah. you're like please stop Just... <laughs> well we're saying that <laughs> You're making this awkward. Stop. It's not me. It's not like you've not done this for a year. I kind of did push that towards (laughs) him being a little awkward about it. (laughs) No, I don't know why this one specifically. Usually you have a little chit chat beforehand. Yeah. Oh, well, do you guys want to chit chat? How are you guys? We're talking about how (laughs) Remy Malik was a real uggo, but we won't get into that. We weren't. Cody was. Cody just. No, it was Kyle. Cody is the only one who uses that word. I literally walked walked into the room. (laughs) Cody looks at me and goes, Remy Malik looks a little weird. And I'm like, really? Kind of like a real uggo, huh? And she was like, well, yeah. No, she didn't say that part, but. Exactly. It's just I just went on the same tangent as I did for that one guy in Kingsman or Kingsman. Yeah. So I'm still standing by that. It gave me a good laugh. Hey, they just pushed that back. Okay, I might not be the only one that's like, mm, maybe not this guy. <laughs> They're gonna digitally They're testing very well him. with audiences. They're distracted yeah. by this guy's face. <laughs> gonna have Lanky to digitally, body that he needs to, to grow d- into. Give him a new face digitally. I don't. It's not his face. It's like the combination of the face and the weird lanky body. Like he just doesn't fit. Like he, like I bet he'll looks be like a, a fit super to me. handsome like man. Human. Everyone is perfect in their own way, Cody. No, he'll be a super handsome man in like ten to fifteen years. Who, Rami? No, the guy in the original Uggo. Jeans man. The, the original, original. The OG Uggo. Yeah. <laughs> when he gets we some salt and pepper out, well, on the. I don't know if we want to figure out the actor's name and just be like calling yeah. him out by name. But. Some white hair around the temples. Some <laughs> built. Yeah, like then he'll be a very handsome man. Just still in his <laughs> awkward face. He'll get there. That's, he's already he's more worried. built with than me, so I, I just he's have just to taller. I don't think he's him. more built. <laughs> I do not agree with either of these statements about these two <laughs> human beings, but you know, just want to say I think everyone is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a there. Pretty snowflake. Solve the problem. <laughs> Good job. Oh, okay. okay, that put that put my mind at ease. There you, you go. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry yeah. I put you on the spot. Jeez, earlier. You I'm, can't do that I'm, to me. I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. The thing that got him all riled up was that we were going to talk about uh, his reaction to Parasite. Um, well, yeah, I saw several movies yeah. over the Thanksgiving break, and then your reaction um, to Irishman, and mm-hmm. then you, which I watched in one sitting because Kyle was only <laughs> only seen an hour of. <laughs> I'm trying to get through it. I I've will seen, get through it all. I've seen like three seconds of a trailer. To know that I don't need to see it. And then um, his God. frozen two what reaction. What happened in those three seconds where you're like, nope. That's just not enough time to form any sort of opinion. Oh, no. It's sad. It's just. It's a sad movie. It's true. No, not that it's a sad movie. I, it's, I feel sad for them for trying to act out a movie where they're trying to be younger men in obviously old man bodies. There's moments where they're de-aged and they are not moving the best, but. I mean, it's true. You can tell us about that later, I just think reliving glory days is kind of sad. But that's not what they're doing. Oh, it's totally what they're doing. No. Well, so far, from what I've seen, I don't think it's that type of movie. No, the script, I mean, this has been, they've been trying to get this thing made, or at least Scorsese has been trying to get this thing made for, you know, at least a decade, so... It would have been a little bit younger if they made it when, <laughs> when he originally came helped. up with it. It would have trimmed $50 million off the de-aging budget to yeah. get rid of five less wrinkles on the face. Yeah. Well, on top of those two movies, you also have Frozen yeah. that we want Frozen to talk reaction. with you about some. Yeah, that one. Christoph so I guess Song. since we're already talking about Irishman, I, I'll start with the Irishman. Yeah. yeah. So obviously it's like three and a half hours long. That's like the biggest th- talking point mm-hmm. about it. And mm-hmm. people are like, how are we ever going to watch this? And it's like, you just watched Endgame. That's like three hours long, but whatever. Um, yeah, true. No, true. I, I, the thing that surprised me is for some reason, at least me, I still think at the back of my head that there's like this difference between Netflix movies and, you know, theatrical movies. But as soon as that little like, ba mm-hmm. Netflix logo thing goes away, and I forget the song name, some old 50s, 60s song starts playing and the movie starts instantly. It's just like, oh, 
this feels so good. This totally, because mm-hmm. you know, it's shot on film. the The opening shot is just this tracking shot through this old nursery home, and they shot it on film. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that made the de-aging even more expensive <laughs> to convert it to digital. And then to <laughs> I mean, maybe. Oh, for sure. I mean, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get to the de-aging. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, what? it's so much to, to explain, but the movie basically tells the true story of Frank Sheeran, who, through a chain of events, found himself in the company of Russell, I can't remember his other name, Joe Pesci's character. Yeah who is like this massively powerful, influential gangster figure. Um, and he starts kind of doing odd jobs for him, which slowly start to involve robbing and killing and, you know, all that. And then through him, he meets uh, Jimmy Hoffa, who they make a point in the movie. He's like, nobody knows who, Jam- who who Hoffa is now. But apparently, like, back then, he was ubiquitous. He was, like, the next to the president. Everybody knew who he was. And then he just disappeared. Right. And that's still the official record to this day is that he just disappeared. Um, And so that's kind of the meat of the movie is kind of showing Frank Sheeran working for Jimmy Hoffa as he slowly gets, you know, more and more enveloped with organized crime. But really, it's just kind of the story of... It's also kind of meta because everybody knows these like classic old gangster film guys, Mm -hmm. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci. And you you're seeing them age in this movie. Yeah. Not always the you know the most well done digital aging, but and then at the end you kind of realize that this whole movie is just kind of reflecting on really was what was was it worth it? This guy spent his whole life killing people, blowing up buildings, all of these horrific acts, and at the end of his life, everybody forgets him. He loses his family. He's gonna die sad and alone in a wheelchair in a nursery home, and nursery. it's just like, and yeah, in a, nursing home. yeah, nursing home. <laughs> well, they're kind of like a they, nursery. Yeah, I do mean it's a full circle. <laughs> yeah, it go is out the way you came in. But yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just a really really well done movie, and for as long as it is, you know, I didn't even think to check my phone or to get up and use the bathroom because. If you, we were kind of joking about this in the office, but like if you shrink it down instead of like three and a half hours, where like each act is at least an hour long, if you just shrink it down to like a 90 minute movie, you know, the acts make perfect sense. It's just that there's so much story to tell that it has to be this long, but no scene is wasted. There's nothing that drags on too long. You know, it it just keeps going and every new scene is just as um, interesting and uh, engrossing as the last and before i knew it it's like whoa okay i watched that whole thing that was awesome but it it does leave a very melancholy f- taste in your mouth which mm. was actually kind of refreshing because a lot of people i feel like misinterpret movies like goodfellas or these gangster movies they see it and they're like oh that lifestyle looks so cool i want to be like that and martin scorsese's never been trying to glorify like, it. yeah he's never been trying to do that but Especially with this movie, it's almost like, okay, guys, you have been getting what I'm trying to be, mm-hmm. what I've been trying to do this whole time. You're getting it so wrong. So I'm going to make it blatantly obvious. Mm. These are sad, damaged men, and they're going to go out, and nobody's, and they're going to be forgotten, and it wasn't worth it. As much as he's made them look cool, there's always been that subjective um, subject matter of like, um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not all roses, obviously. No, I mean, it, it, a lot of it, I feel like, depends on the music he plays because there's like a classic Scorsese look where you pair different songs with like a guy getting shot in the back of the head. And it's like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the best movies of the year. It'll be interesting to see mm-hmm. how it turns out. Award season, I know it's already won several top prizes. Yeah, still early, but I mean... It's not my personal favorite just because, you know, I, I love gangster movies. I love Martin Scorsese, but they're not my favorite type of movie. Yeah. So a well-done movie in a different genre, I guess, will probably appeal to me more than a gangster movie, even if it's a done as well as this. Mm-hmm. But I cannot deny that it's easily one of the best Okay, let's get movies. to the fun part of it. The de-aging? It, yeah. Yeah. So that was like the biggest thing leading up to this movie was like 
there was a bunch of delays and reshoots and it jacked the budget up through the roof and you watch it and it's kind of like really like that's <laughs> that's what they came out of yeah <laughs> i mean it's really only in the first scene but that first scene is because they get right into the de-aging you know it's yeah which is probably up to the movie's benefit because if they spend a long time with out it and then halfway through that would like take you out of it but because they just kind of start out with it it gives you an opportunity to get used to it but yeah it's it it you you notice it immediately right like the first time you really see it is uh, Robert De Niro's character meets Joe Pesci's character for the first time. His car like breaks down or something mm-hmm. and Joe Pesci shows him how to fix it and they're looking under the hood of the car and it's just, I don't know what age he's supposed to be, <laughs> but like he has like perfect black, like thick hair, but his face is like, it's, it's just an uncanny valley thing. It's impossible to right. describe. You just have to see it, but it mm-hmm. doesn't totally work. Yeah, but the movie and everything else is so good that eventually you kind of get used to it, or it kind of just slowly goes away because they become the right age. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, when it cuts back to like actual age, Robert De Niro, I was there was like a, I had like the sigh of relief, like, oh, back yeah. to like a real person. Because you're just hoping it's like not too long. Just yeah. don't hold on their faces for too long. <laughs> so I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try and say like you don't even notice it. The movie's so you good. Do. Yeah. You completely notice well, it. Yeah. And what we talked about too with like Captain Marvel, you can de-age a face cosmetically, but there's no way you can de-age the, you can't the de-age limberness and the joints. joints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't they can't change <laughs> like, yeah. the body that they have. We were laughing earlier when we were talking about this because there's a scene where Robert De Niro's character's daughter gets shoved by the shop owner. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's a big tough gangster guy. He's like, Did he shove you? Did he shove you? And she's like and she nods her head, and he's like, oh, boy. So he grabs her hand, and they, he marches her down to that shop, <laughs> and he's like, you wait outside. And he goes in, and he grabs the guy, throws him through the door, shatters the glass, and he, you're kind of like, whoa, this is intense. But then he kind of like, <laughs> he like hobbles hobbles over to yeah. him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just yeah. like this janky, like, like Robert De Niro, you got... Did you, are you sure you didn't want to use a stunt double for this scene? Like, yeah, they try to make it like seem it's kind of intense because <laughs> of how slow he goes down and like hits the guy, but it, it uh, you can tell it's the yeah. age mostly. <laughs> but then you see later on when he's like really old, he has like that, like you know, it's it's an it's unfortunate, but you know when like an if an old person like falls yeah. in their house, it can be really bad. Yeah, and that you see that kind of happen later, but since he's the appropriate age, it's like oh. It's oh, like no. so sad to see. That probably wasn't acting. <laughs> yeah, he's probably <laughs> just just keep going, just go with it. Yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> so he's like, make this work. And he's my like, hip. no, Scorsese, Martin, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Broke my hip. Jeez. But no, the movie, the movie is amazing. The I, it'll probably be a while before I watch it again because it's a it's a big undertaking. I know we've been trying to convince Kyle that he has. Be- <laughs> <laughs> four hours to watch it. It's well, very hard to, to get a four-hour window, first. apparently. Just, it's yeah. not in a theater. I don't believe that. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just like, have literally nothing else to do. <laughs> that could very potentially be what the case is. But, I don't know. I didn't even plan on watching it. I like got back from a car trip, and I was like, oh yeah, that came out. Boom. Started watching it. Well, there you go. You found your window. <laughs> four hours later, I was like, oh, Did you watch happened. it by yourself? Yeah. Well, see, Kyle has other people in the house to give They're not as important as the Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, they and will not be as important. And their preferences, he very much takes into account, so. Well, you're such a good boyfriend. Yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point, you gotta be like, hey, I've been really good. <laughs> I think I deserve I an afternoon to myself. I have to watch the Irishman. <laughs> I watched enough Kardashians. <laughs> I, get the car- I get to watch the Irishman now. Luckily, it's not Kardashians. Ugh. Thank God. <laughs> I'm glad I got that reality show reference because <laughs> my trash reality show was Rock of Love, which I think was like 10 years oh, ago. <laughs> so. Is that the uh, the poison Brett, guy? The Brett Michaels, Brett Michaels guy. Michaels? God. Yeah. Last time I got into trashy reality, that was big. <laughs> it's I been a while. It. Trashy reality television will never get old. No. It's the best. It should die, but it will never die. Oh, it'll never die. And it shouldn't ever die. We need it. But it, Do we, though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes me nervous. <laughs> it's, it's, it checks all the boxes. Your guilty pleasure. It's a fascinating psychological experiment. You just got to analyze these people that you know you're better than. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But 
the same time, though, I <laughs> worry. you feel fuel, so good. Yeah, it fuels your ego. I do feel like at times there are some people that look at it and are like, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's really yeah, good. And I want to be them. I will it's never like, understand ooh. people who watch it unironically, but they're out there. Yeah. Oh, reality television. Well, let me, I guess we'll talk about the other movie. Speaking of... Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of reality television, tell us about Parasite. <laughs> Parasite, I was not planning on, or not expecting to be able to see this in a theater. So when I saw I'm that it so was jealous. playing at this theater that I was in, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm capitalizing on this opportunity. Because, mm-hmm. you know, all I know about it, all that really anybody knows about it, is that um, a guy gets hired to be a tutor. Well, it's a Korean film. It's South Korean film. Yeah. Bong Joon Ho is the but, director. And it's actually mm-hmm. been getting quite a bit of praise and yeah, it's been getting buzz. crazy praise. Yeah, and literally from the first scene, I can absolutely see why. Because the thing about this movie, at least to me, the whole time you're watching it, the way scenes play out, the way just the the general idea mm-hmm. of a scene are things that I had never really seen done before. Because I mean, you think of different genres and you think of like, oh, this genre, you can you can definitely count on there being this classic scene, like the, yeah. the broken friendship or the confrontation right. with the father, you know, those types of things. But in this movie, almost all of its scenes are just totally original things that I hadn't seen done before. And it just keeps going. And on top of that, it's so unpredictable. You think... That you kind of know what's happening, and then all of a sudden there's this crazy turn, but it still makes perfect sense. Is this this spiral descent into being placed in a world of haves and have not have nots? Is it like that? A- is w- way too. It, the movie is very obviously from the opening scene about like class. Yeah. Basically, like how just the very existence of. Uh, class inequality. The yeah. fact that there can be people who are so rich and people who can have literally nothing. You know, and it it's just what results just because that's a right. thing. And then when those worlds collide. Yeah, when they collide, but also like it does. It's not like it's it's the movie isn't like trying to make rich people seem bad. Right. All it's saying is that just because rich people only have to exist, and this is going to happen underneath yeah. them. And a lot of times they're not even going to realize it because they're so isolated. They have no idea what's going on. Right. Their daily concerns are like, oh, we got to go shopping for this birthday party. Whereas the lower class are like drowning literally like in the streets after a storm. It's like, it's crazy. But the movie is hilarious all the way through, even while it's also being like terrifying. And Is just, it terrifying because it hit like close to home because you're like, this is really real? Or is it terrifying because... No, it's because... just terrifying in like a straight up horror movie way. Really? Like, whoa. Like, just the imagery and what happens and the way it's shot, uh-huh. the way it's edited and the music. It's just like, you'll be laughing at this just absurd, hilarious joke. And then five seconds later, you're like, oh my God. Like, whoa, I don't, I wasn't expecting this. But it's... It's impossible to to describe because, and maybe it's a cliche at this point because so much of its praise is like the most unpredictable movie. You're not gonna know where what happens, but it's totally justified, and it's it's just so did, good. Did you yes. have an inclination on what the story would be going into it, or like I said, I just knew it was about a guy who gets hired to tutor a girl uh-huh. who is from a rich family, right? And he's not from a rich family, and uh, he brings his friend in. Right. His friend gets him the job. Yeah. So his friend is the original tutor, but he's going to go study abroad. But he's like, if once I leave, they're going to have to find a new tutor. And all of the other tutors are these drunken college kids. And they're horrible because he has feelings for the the girl that he's right. tutoring. Like, but he trusts not him. romantic feelings, just cares about her. No, romantic feelings. He's like, as soon as she gets to college, I'm going to ask her out officially. Oh, um, that's weird. Is she in high school? It's a little weird. Yeah, she's a high school sophomore. Okay, high school, that's probably okay. But uh, yeah, so he trusts his friend to take over and not make a move on her. So he's like, yeah. here, I'll put in a good word for you. And so the guy gets uh, interviewed for the job and then uh-huh. he gets the job. So that's all I knew about it. And very quickly after that, it's like, that is not all it is. <laughs> <laughs> like the next scene. And it was great. Does that have a good ending? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does that have an ending I would like? Exactly. Is it a good Eric <laughs> yeah. ending? It's a good it's, Eric ending. <laughs> it's weirdly both. It's kind of happy, but it's 
really messed up. I'm going to ask you after the podcast what it is. Because <laughs> I need to know the level of messed upness. Because I do actually want to see I am this. I dying to see this movie. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's, I cannot know. It's really good. And just because I know that there are people out there who just the mere fact that it's subtitled might be like a hurdle. I do genuinely feel like this movie could convert right most people i think if the movie is good enough people the subtitles start to melt away exactly. and you just get into it i mean from the again the opening scene in this movie is so good it's so hilarious and it's so unique and just the way it's written and what the characters are doing the look of their apartment everything it's just yeah the subtitles are gone after the first line of dialogue do you think it's a universal story that could because of the income inequality be anywhere or is it because it's um, Southeast Asian, you know, where there is like this crazy disparity? No, I think it's pretty universal because another great thing about the movie is, like I said, it's very obviously about class, mm -hmm. but the movie never outright says that because it's, right. it's entertaining first and foremost. It's hilarious. It's all of these other things, but, you know, it, it's... The class thing is just kind of there. Kind of universally what everybody can... Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people don't like preachy preach movies. Yeah. You know, because the movie is never... Like I said, it's not hating rich people. Mm. It's just pointing out an obvious truth. Is it like Midsommar? No. Where it's going to be like this high-end horror mm. with a message thing? No. That I'm not going to like the... No. turn of it you see no like <laughs> it's not it's okay. such a i genuinely think this is a very like it's an accessible but very unique movie okay like most people who unique. see it they're gonna be like i have never seen anything like that before that was really weird but yeah it was really good okay it's like yeah it's accessible <laughs> oh, i'm so excited well, I'll I want to see this more one so bad. <laughs> or I'll it's going to be possible to explain the ending because so many parts that happen through all of the other it rest of the movie come while, together at the like ending. Like yeah. To explain through it all. That's fine. Next time. <laughs> it's so good. Well, how was your experience with Frozen 2? <laughs> I liked Frozen 2 a lot. Um, <laughs> other than like I was ranting about, venting about, there's two people who are on their phone for like the entire time. Ugh. And I was like ripping up my tickets or my receipt stub trying to throw it at them because i'm <laughs> passive aggressive Did and petty like that i would have thrown popcorn no i didn't get anything because it would have got stuck in their hair and it would have been funny one was just like this fat trucker dad who was obviously there because his daughter really wanted to see it she's Aww. like sitting on the edge of her seat like <gasps> just so like enraptured by the film and he's just like oh, whoa, like, holding his phone to the side he couldn't just makes, enjoy it to be in the moment with her he wasn't even like doing anything date. on his phone because yeah. of course i looked at his phone yeah i'm like what are you doing and he just kept like going back and forth between these two apps but i don't he wasn't typing anything he wasn't texting anybody he was like he was reading the same message over and over again for the whole movie it was really weird and then another one was just some teenage girl who was checking snapchat and taking yeah. pictures of the screen like <laughs> frozen too but other than that i like the movie a lot i thought it was very cute i like the themes of it a lot i like the songs mm -hmm. most of the songs um olaf was hilarious <laughs> The thing I like about Olaf is in a lot of these more kiddie movies, there's the obvious comic relief yeah. kind of designed to be as cute as possible, as funny as possible. And it, a lot of times it comes across as so artificial. Right. But Olaf in this one, because I don't remember the first one that well. I remember liking him a lot in that one too. But I just loved his like existential crisis character arc yeah. in this movie so much. Just like every <laughs> line he said was was just hilarious. About growing up and yeah, all. he's like, oh, this will all make sense when I'm grown up. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, Olaf, oh, you have no idea. It's he. What I like about his character the most, and that's refreshing, is his innocence. Yeah, he's just so pure and innocent. He's just like, I like that. I, I just love that. Yeah, you look around and it's, he's just like, weirdly relatable to all ages. Yeah. Like, and obviously that's the joke because you'll never, you're never gonna make sense of everything. But just seeing him have that optimistic approach is just like, oh, it's just like heartwarming. My favorite part of the whole movie, like I told you guys, was after they kind of like thaw those frozen, the Arendelle forces and yeah. the, I forget their name, the North I can't remember Andrian, anything. something like that. 
and then Olaf quickly like recounts the first story. Yeah. <laughs> the Arendelle commander like, whose who name I learned is I think his name's Lieutenant Matthias or something. Yeah. Voiced by Sterling K. Brown. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. It's so good. <laughs> he's so good. Yeah, he's, he's really just funny. so into it. Yeah. And Olaf, you know, he's saying it a million miles an hour, making it sound really short and simple mm-hmm. and, and then it keeps cutting to his face and he's like, Oh no. He could not be more absorbed in that yeah. story. Yeah. And I just looked at him and I'm like that is what everybody should aspire to be when they're hearing a good story. When they're seeing a good movie, reading a good book, hearing a good album, that should be your investment level. Yeah. Did you like, stay oh. for the after credits scene at the end? Did you? Do you think I stayed no. for the after? No. You I didn't know even know it, there was one. You want to know what it is? Sure. So Olaf recounts what happened in the movie. Mm-hmm. Only his audience is the big snowman guy from the first one, the big monster one that protects Elsa's oh, castle, yeah, yeah. and a bunch of little ones. <laughs> and he's like holding them and holding the little the big ones holding the little ones he's like we're alive <laughs> it's really funny no uh, no it was a, fine <laughs> it's a good movie i know that obviously that into the unknown song was kind of their big push to be the next let it go mm-hmm. but i didn't buy it yeah it, it the is song a good was fine song. yeah the song was was fine it was catchy yeah, i was humming catchy. it to myself Oh, no, it's so but, good. Uh, We've been listening to it so much. <laughs> but I just felt like, you know, Let It Go was like the centerpiece of the whole movie. Yeah. And this one is like the third song in the movie. She's like right. singing it in her bedroom instead right. of like out on her own, isolated. And it was it's a good song, but it... I, I think know. you were right when you said it came too early in the movie. Because yeah. in the first one, we had gotten to know them a little bit and mm-hmm. she was so cold and then she was humiliated and scared and you were just like your emotions were wretched up when she got to that song but yeah. here it's well again and know. this was i remember you saying that there's a lot of songs at the beginning yeah and because of that i feel like this one just kind of becomes one of the intro songs yeah because i i was way i thought the uh i don't know the song names but anna's song when she's like going to rescue elsa and the song elsa sings when she like goes into that fortress of solitude place right. i thought those two were much more powerful songs yeah because they came at like heightened emotional yeah, points that in the story Anna song is dark like at the oh, start yeah. of it there was a point where i was like she's singing about depression i'm pretty sure she's singing about depression right yeah. now i'm like oh my god yeah. i'm right. saying this movie like it's super family friendly and everything you would expect it to be but like it does it has it's tackling themes of like impermanence and growing up Mm -hmm. and losing your growing apart from your friends and families it weirdly knows how to grow with its audience yeah to grow with its audience and that's what we were hoping for too so that was pretty cool yeah no i i liked it even the christoph song yes oh yeah that was the thing i was gonna say i I was so confused when i saw it i was like how do you not obviously get the joke of this oh i totally got the joke but it was I it think Kyle totally and I's point fit. was it almost took it. It was so jarring. It almost took us out of the movie. I was feel the totally opposite. I thought it was hilarious. It was one of my favorite songs in the movie. Maybe and if all the songs ahead of that hadn't been so like generic standard, like <laughs> movie wasn't songs. Generic. Yeah. No, that one wasn't. That's what I'm saying. That one was like because all power the songs ballad. feel like they fit into the movie, and then yeah. this one is like 80s power ballad yeah, i get i, I can see like, what you're saying right. yeah. if the first few from? had been either 80s or 60s or had something like spicy with them as well then it yeah. would have... so you're saying that all the other ones very much sound like frozen songs but yeah. this one sounds like a silly spoof of an 80s yeah. power ballad <laughs> yeah. yeah i get that but you're, i just you thought it fit point. perfectly yeah. with, well before then we see Christoph, and again i don't remember really what he was like in the first one um, but he in was this about one, the same. It yeah, he's like same. a dorky kind of sensitive guy, and he's kind of anxious and he's overthinking everything. And when this song, he's just he's a dork. And then this right. song happens, and it's like so perfectly fitting. And you see him like almost like really femininely like skipping on the rocks, right? Like, flipping uh, his hair, yeah, and... flipping his hair, getting superimposed over the over the screen. I just thought it was the sound of the song. And the choreography of what he was doing, yeah, fit my idea of Kristoff like, perfectly. <laughs> I guess that makes sense too. Like when you explain yeah. it that way, but I, 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 I get it. Hilarious. It was just that moment where I was like, "Do I think this works because I think it's so weird that it's funny, <laughs> or does this just not work for me because it's so weird?" And, and the so song funny. was just super sweet. The song was yeah. so sweet. The song is really good. Yeah, it's like, like oh, it's you're such a good guy, Kristoff. Yeah, but it was that was a good point. I always too. come back to that line. It's like, well, "Who am I if I'm not your man?" Yeah. It's like, oh, you are Kristoff. You were somebody before her and you'll be somebody after her. You are a strong, independent man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's the best version of himself. But yeah, I th- all three very good movies. Nice. I'm nice. so I'm just so happy we're finally at this point in the year. Yes, Where it's good movies again. <laughs> yeah. Me yes. too. With again, there was the... a big lull. Where There's I was like, definitely I'm some dying. gems throughout the year, but they're few and far between. Kyle and I have been going over just like all of the movies of the decade and kind of comparing the different years. And when you actually go through it and choose the movies that stood out to you, it's interesting to see how many from like this year versus yeah. how many from this year. And this year is because we're in December now. Mm-hmm. You know, this year is definitely a lot less than yeah. other years. I, yeah, but it's it's about in the it's about in the middle, I would say, because I think there were some lesser years in this one. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like compared to the like seventeen and eighteen, when looking at the looking at the lists that I made, I was like, there's a lot of movies in those years that I genuinely really enjoyed yeah. and have stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Then looking at this year, it's just kind of like not as many. Yeah, the ones that are there are very good, but there's just not as many. Sure. Hmm. I've. I w- would be interested to see if there's anything that sticks out for me because over this like last decade, I haven't actually got to watch that many movies mm-hmm. and just the way life takes you at certain points in your life about oh, yeah. time commitments and, and priorities. And now that I'm finally at a point in my life where I can actually take time to go back and watch movies. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's definitely a big lull <laughs> <laughs> in this, in this decade. No, it's really interesting to look at it because it's like, just looking at the list from like 2010, 2011, it's just, it's like a time capsule almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm looking at these movies and I was like, I can vividly remember being in the theater, seeing this movie. It's like, was that, that like from, not feel like, like from that, that long ago? 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 Like that the first time me. I saw Inception, I'm looking at the list. I'm like, I remember that exactly. Yeah. In the theater. I was mm-hmm. like, that wasn't yesterday. What? <laughs> oh, it goes by so fast. Oh yeah. And it just picks up. Mm-hmm. Now you guys are getting to the age where then it like really <laughs> oh, years awesome. go by awesome i'm i'm prepared yeah totally ready as long as good away. movies keep coming i don't get over it true yeah they're good punch marks in the life like yeah maybe that, i think that helps with memory too it does mm-hmm. i i can't even like you said 2010 what's a movie that came out i just blank nothing yeah, i, I nothing. always think about i'm always thinking back i don't know i always just make i love making lists like that i don't know why lists are fun they <laughs> are <laughs> well we have um a few trailers that have recently popped out because we not only do we get good movies this time of year but we get the <laughs> trailers for the good movies coming up hopefully good. yeah yeah hopefully good movies i think there's going to be a lot more dropping next week too so be prepared for us to be going through a lot of trailers too <laughs> yeah lot more trailers but well, this i guess week, two of these three trailers are good oh let's find out <laughs> maybe one of those trailers are good what do you one wanna... is good one's you know meh cool and then the other one is like Ugh. Mm. i'm so curious so goes, i want to know goes, you guys huh. thoughts yeah. i think well, you could guess you want, our thoughts what do you want to start with <laughs> let's start the with a good huh? one uh, or uh. let's start with a good one everybody the huh no the ah yeah that was my Listen, that, what, what, Okay, we'll, we'll goes, do his. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> eh. Okay. Those are the three. <laughs> so we'll do the. Ah. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm, one. I'm pretty sure we're all talking about James Bond. Oh right? yes. Yes. No, yeah, I was too. <laughs> that, I think of the I am three so. That we have. Uh, it was just so nice to see this trailer because maybe it's just because you know we read about the news and the delays and the drama all the time every yeah. day because uh, every movie has reshoots and stuff. But this James Bond movie especially. Went through some went through some drama. Yeah, should, but we, should do, we look back? Do you think back? that that is f- because it actually had drama, like we've seen in other movies, or is it just like that people are so rabid for information? I, it's pr- I think it's, it's both. One. But yeah. oh, it yeah yeah that's right. Okay. I'm, saying, I'm saying it's both, <laughs> but no, it, it's oh. it's it's mainly because. You know, studios and the publicist publications are learning that for whatever reason, people love to read about the behind the scenes and the drama and stuff. Right. So they kind of, I feel like they play it up. It's covered all the time. Right. And it paints this image like this movie is a train wreck right now. How are they ever going to salvage it? And then you see this trailer and it's like, it was yeah, never, none a of that ever, it's like none of that even happened. Mm-hmm. This movie yeah. just looks so good. It looks like just the exactly what you want from James Bond. Again, it's just a trailer, but you can see some of the gadgets, the returning characters, the new characters, the music, the cinematography. I was just so excited for it. Leading I, up to this yeah. trailer, it felt like they were trying to go back to like kind of classic old school Bond. It's like the 25th 
Bond movie when we saw like the title the being announced and like the first poster. Like we were like, well, maybe not the poster we didn't like as much because no, just poster was dumb. <laughs> it, it's it's not that great of a poster, but like <laughs> yeah. with the way like the title looks and the way that they announced it with like a clip or something of the title, like we were like, oh, and it feels like it's trying to get away from Spectre being not good and back to like a classic feel good Bond Skyfall. movie. Good. Yeah, exactly. Sky almost Skyfall. You know, it's, I feel like it feels very different from Skyfall it too. It does more action. Well, the thing with the, the Daniel Craig movies is like they're. I might be wrong. Like somebody can fact check me, but Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, I'm pretty sure were the first like direct sequel to a previous James Bond yeah. movie. And then after that, because I went Quantum of Solace and Skyfall came right after that one, right? I think so. I think that's when it went. I can check. And then Skyfall comes out, and it's like this alternate take on james bond it got more like into his internal psychology yeah and it was just darker it's kind of goes into his backstory and And it was was smaller in scope it wasn't about the yeah action as much it it wasn't like a kind of like that pulpy super spy espionage story i want to say it was stripped down james bond yeah i mean literally too at the beginning he gets shot and they have to like rebuild him he has to well not literally well he cuts the bullet out of himself yeah and it's like relearn how to be a secret agent, basically. Casino but, Royale was the first one of his movies. Yeah. yeah. And then Quantum of Solace. But and did Skyfall, Skyfall come after Quantum of Solace? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I was right. Yeah, and but, then uh, Spectre, and now and No now, Time uh, Left no to Die. No Time to Die. It's just the best title. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this one, it, obviously it's a continuation mm-hmm. still, because, you know, the returning characters and stuff, but... It just, I don't know, it just seems like a, like it's more of a standalone, just big celebration of James Bond and Daniel Craig's run yeah. as Bond, who is almost universally loved, I yeah. feel like. Um, and it's just going to be really interesting to see if they choose to, like, send him out, like, liter- like with a f- sense of finality, or if it'll just end and we just know that, you know, no more Daniel Craig. I've been seeing on the World Wide Web on the internets that people have been like really praising this trailer and saying mm-hmm. it's like one of the best bond trailers they've ever seen and i was like oh wow i'm really surprised by this reaction so don't you love it I think when the... I, this is going to play and this is going to do some good business yeah. i think don't you love it when people are just like positive about something yes it I feels so refreshing it. yeah i love it i was actually my first reaction was like whoa there's a lot going on it's <laughs> not just a simple bond story of he, him going after a bad guy and getting the girl there is like an air of mystery you don't get Rami malik's bad guy character till nearly the end of the mm-hmm. trailer and even then it's like in a twist like you're not sure if that was truly the bad villain yeah or what was going on. I felt like he was sitting in Jared Leto's character from Blade Runner 2049. I totally <laughs> got that vibe. That room. Yeah. yeah I, I guess like, I could see that I was now. Like, Did James Bond just stumble into like 40 years, 30 years in the future? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like Lashana Lynch's character. I loved seeing that because instantly I feel like all, because remember all that drama oh, where people were like, don't remind they're me. They're replacing James Bond with a black woman. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like that one line in the, in the trailer clarified all of that it's right. literally yeah. what we've been saying james bond has been out of commission for a while obviously they're gonna pull in somebody new but now he's back and you know yeah. she's giving him the stink eye i just and like, I think that's gonna be a great dynamic to i watch. just like seeing her like look like an awesome character like have like, an awesome character to work with because i've only seen her so far in captain marvel i thought she did yeah. well but it, oh, yeah, it just wasn't where i know a, her from it just wasn't a role that i think could she could really do Play a whole lot yeah, it's not really so, a stand-up role this against um Daniel Craig's Bond, and just from the little snippets, I'm all in. Yeah, I can't oh, wait yeah. to see this version. There is a lot of characters. It seems like it's going to be interesting to see the uh, a lot of returning characters for sure. The interplay between them, the different screen times, the arcs. Yeah, yeah. No, I and I think what I, my biggest takeaway from the trailer, and we'll get to this when we talk about the Black Widow trailer later, was that it felt authentic action, like real world grounded action with a hint of spectacle in it just like how you would want an action movie to be Mm -hmm. sure sure it didn't feel like gimmicky comic book like flying through the air (laughs) yeah we'll get there (laughs) i mean but but i saw the i saw the black widow trailer first and then i saw this one and i'm like oh this one's so much better like it's just it just grounded and i don't know I, i think i'm I'm starting to, after Avengers, wind down away from the comic books stories. And maybe that feat, that, I don't know, that artificial feel of action. And I wanted something 
yeah. more real. And this definitely oh, gives me sense. that. But even but, when it gets like cartoon, you know, like at the end right. when he the the miniguns come out of the yeah. headlights, like that's so James Bond that it works completely. Right. Mm-hmm. But you want that. Like yes. I wanted the the guns to come out of the headlights. Yeah, and he just you know does a donut shooting at right. everybody and it's but like he, this is the coolest thing the ever. Car, <laughs> but the car moves like how it it would actually yeah I, it's the little things like that that i mm-hmm. that i'm more excited about great trailer mm-hmm. for, i keep forgetting that this comes out in april for, for whatever reason in my head for so long i'm like it's still it doesn't come out till november yeah because i think it was yeah. supposed to come out this november originally right right and then yeah, they had to push right. it back yeah so that's that's why I'm getting confused. Hey, I'm so glad it didn't that. come out this November. There was such a stack slate this yeah. year, and it would have been lost. I think. I felt like it could have done pretty well at the start of the year. I mean, Terminator and Charlie's Angels all bombed, and yeah. although right. it, 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 there's no, but you're right. Later in the season, it did get pretty stacked. There's yeah. no yeah. way to tell this for sure, but I wonder. Part of me just wonders if it came out this year, if it would just not do good maybe it's just because you know what i'm saying this right. this the running trend of this year has been like finales like mm-hmm. big you know big everything coming together this is this big send-off and a lot of them have underperformed right like critically and commercially they just aren't what people want and except for end game and i feel but like yeah, yeah. <laughs> end game just kind of it's like how are we supposed to come even close to that <laughs> but I feel like if it came out this year, it would just get grouped in with all of these other yeah. things, and it's like mm. the cool thing about James Bond though is that it's he's still such a relevant character. Mm-hmm. People still love James Bond, yeah, and they understand that just because there's a bad one here and there, that's not the end of it. There are tons right. of bad James Bond movies. Probably because they're Maybe not a controversial so thing to say, but interconnected eh. that if you ruin one, it doesn't reverberate. Yeah, it just people ends are willing to forgive one. and forget, and they're like, oh, we'll mm-hmm. just try again on the next one. Right. Because they still love Daniel Craig as, as James Bond. Yeah. And I don't even think Spectre was that bad. No, it I just, just think it was a little messy and yeah. it was following one of the best James Bond movies. So Right. You couldn't live up to expectations. Yeah. And now that, that that's out of the way, now you can come back with new ones, mm-hmm. new expectations. And just with the huge reception of this trailer, I do think this is going to be a big, big movie. Yeah. People are, people are excited. It'll be good for United Artists. Yeah, and MGM, it, they're self-distributing through yeah. United Artists, and it's it's a good one for a smaller studio to pick up. Uh, such a blockbuster, I think. Yeah, it'll help them out for sure. And it'll just be good for the theaters, mm-hmm. so to not have to be beholden to one of the, like the five major studios. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point too. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's go into the next one that was like. Eh. The one that's kind of like the w- worst version of this trailer right. in some ways. Which was the Black <laughs> Widow trailer. Oh, Black Widow. You're like five or six years late to the game in terms so of origin stories. So late to the game. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, even though they're trying to work around that, but being like... It's, it's not even an, an origin, origin st- story. Not like technically an origin story. Yeah. It's more like a coming back to your roots right. type of story. But it still feels like it might be a few years too late of a See, movie. See, that to me just makes it seem even more like inessential i do I wonder oh, if that's gonna yeah. hurt it a bit <laughs> i i mean everybody despite knows the brand she, name i hey, guess wonder what if she it's... dies you know yeah. she dies and it just seems like i don't know it's cool i guess but because it's so late because it's not the next chapter it's not continuing anything i don't know i it just maybe this is too cynical but i feel like they're just making it because they're like oh we kind of screwed up we didn't have any female superhero movies until and, captain marvel but this was like our DC first big beat su- to it. yeah fans were i think wanting a black widow movie for a while i don't really want one didn't really want one in general but at least like this trailer gets me kind of excited that like it could be cooler than i expected it to be like any but, average marvel movie i'm sure it'll be fine in the theater yeah i'm sure i'll Walk it'll obviously maybe. do business but we don't know if it's maybe. gonna be one thing that intri- i don't know as as big as what, any Cap- of the other ones any of these <laughs> i just hope I the narrative. i don't know how to view this one i don't know if it's like right. ant-man successful or if it could be like captain marvel surprise dollars success. yeah, yeah surprise yeah. I, I don't know i don't, I don't know want what to the make narrative it. to be though if it's not good is that females can't be superheroes good because there's yeah. so Ugh. many issues with this yeah. that it's See, like i don't yeah i I mean, obviously, that obviously none Angels. of us. Angels. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I seen the movie. It's just an all right action movie. Yeah. yeah obviously, none of us <laughs> here think that female no. superheroes can't lead a movie. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's stupid. But stupid. I do feel like Marvel is kind of shooting themselves in the foot by right. 
trying to make this one. You right. know, it's because Captain Marvel, again, it's an average movie, but it wasn't an inessential movie. It was a new character. She yeah. had a part to play later on down the line. But this, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not very excited for Mostly, it. Mostly, I wasn't impressed by the action. Like, her hand-to-hand combat is always the best. And so when she was fighting her sister in the trailer, that part was really cool. I'm like, yeah, that oh, was a that's cool awesome. I was watching a Bourne movie. Yeah. But then then it gets into the comic book stuff with the costumes and everything. And I was like, mm, I'm not, i kind of over that, surprisingly. Yeah. It's hmm. a lot of the costumes. It wasn't so much the costumes. It was just the ridiculous, like... The flying through the air and the... Yeah, you can tell like she's moving through the air while yeah. they're like shooting well, that's, at her. That's that, what I've been that part saying. I was like, it's cool. That's what I've been it saying quite for fit so that long character, about all but, of these right. Marvel movies is because, again, they're all fun and cool in the moment. But when you think back on it, almost every single one of them has to have this giant, big, epic spectacle scene right. or scenes. And when they all do it, it's not really special anymore when the next one does it. It's nothing like the um, Mission Impossible Halo jump. No. I mean, that what thing was... It's just two dudes falling through the sky. Right. It's not like a thousand pieces of debris surrounding them while these soldiers right. are shooting for them from behind. But and... the Halo jump was so awesome, and this just looks so corny and gimmicky. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool, but in the back of my head, I'm yeah. like, it's just another big money shot yeah like, that was kind of me i was like oh that's cool but there's no way that's real well realistic in no. the vein yeah. that they're trying to go with in this movie but. the thing that i'm most interested <laughs> about because and you kind of brought up where i wanted to go with it when you said like ant-man successful or captain marvel which successful. ant-man is still a successful movie i'm just saying it is of course in the, terms of marvel's box office dollars like that's definitely one of their uh lesser the, what i'm getting at is i just wonder because this is the first big marvel movie that's post disney plus you know mm-hmm. yeah and again until the actual disney plus series start coming out it's not you can't really tell will, for sure will they come out before that no because i don't think it, they come out until next next like holiday season oh I don't, i'm not sure i think it's like next november mm-hmm. i, don't I could know. be wrong again well, i don't know because if they we start, have wandavision them. we have falcon and winter soldier and i think the falcon winter soldier one will come up first yeah because that one are, is in production yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if, again, we're we're out of the giant Endgame, which we had Saga. Spider-Man, which followed yeah. up, which is still really good. But I feel like now that Disney Plus is a thing and people know that Marvel is going to be on Disney Plus, I'm wondering if at least the, the people who aren't the diehard Marvel fans are kind of over it. You know, right. like, okay, that was obviously the conclusion. I feel like I don't need... I feel like this isn't a big uh, society, like event narrative that i need to be a part of so maybe mm-hmm. they'll sit this one out and maybe it will be more ant-man successful yeah that's a good what point. is the lowest grossing marvel movie have they ever had like a bomb no like no. solo obviously it still made a lot of money but for a star wars movie it's kind of a bomb it might be thor right. too i can try and look it but up like has marvel curious. ever had a yeah a bomb for a marvel is movie? it dr strange or thor 2 no or uh, dr strange actually made first some good captain money. america it could be one of like I the original like ones because before Disney, they were yeah before when Paramount, they were Paramount and they were trying to find their footies. Incredible Hulk, maybe. Oh, it could be Hulk. I didn't think about that one. Yeah, Hulk, forgets about that one. The Hulk ones. But I'm not saying that Black Black Widow is going to bomb. But I, I, I don't know how invested in to this aspect of her story. I'm in. I'm not. Yeah. And I just feel like that's kind of telling. I wouldn't have mind if it either went all the way back into how she escaped from he broke away from mm-hmm. her training or i wouldn't have minded like if it went back to a point where she met hawkeye and cha- made the change like those are two yeah. critical points in her story i think are important this one i feel like is a manufactured critical point like yeah. oh by the <laughs> way didn't you know she well, went back and did these things another thing that kind of i feel like adds to the uh like pointlessness that's harsh but yeah excuse me is it's obviously trying to introduce all of these other major characters like david harbour's character florence's character and you've seen so many movies that are supposed to take place after this and it's like where are those people like is is there going to be a movie about what's david harbour's character's name red guardian 
Like, is there going to be a Red Guardian movie in the future now? It's is Red Guardian supposed to be Russia's Captain America? I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, that that's together. true. It's it. There's been comics about him. Yeah, we don't like the Reds. But I thought that was what Winter Soldier was supposed to be too. Um. No, not I mean, well, Red I mean, Guardian. Not this, the names, not in this the name universe, is right, a lot more equivalent to Captain America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been different, you know, stories that have done they're all kind of the so. same. Okay, <laughs> I don't know, but what I'm saying is like, are they really going to introduce all of these new characters <laughs> that haven't been in any of the other stuff, and yeah. then Black Widow's dead? So are these characters supposed to come back in a future movie? And be like, oh, without remember. Black Widow, yeah. you know, it's like remember Black Widow. It's just too many things to juggle, and I feel like they don't really come together. Yeah, I don't well, know. They could also just be supporting characters for this movie. Yeah, and this could yeah. be the one-off that we've been kind of wishing that Marvel had done, not <laughs> less interconnected. But I yeah. think I think going back to Black Widow, which is an interconnected character, you kind of expect it a little bit. Yeah, that's always the thing. It always comes down to, well, if it's good, then I'll yeah. forgive it. And yeah. it's good because you can't deny it. You can't say it's bad if it's not. Right. But there's just more than most Marvel movies. There's not a lot going for it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. At least that's making me want to see it. Right. At this point, yeah. maybe things will change as we, because it doesn't come out till May. So maybe things mm-hmm. will change as we get closer to summer. Yeah. Were you guys still curious about who made the less domestically? Oh yeah. yeah. Did you find out? Yeah, it's Incredible Hulk. It is. It okay. Is. Yep. How much did it make? One hundred and thirty-four million. Jeez. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's way lower than most of them. Yeah. It's oh. still a hundred million dollars. I know. <laughs> Again, for a Marvel movie, it's yeah. For them starting out back in two thousand and eight when yeah. this movie came out, yeah. Cool. Well, I guess let's move on to our third and worst trailer. <laughs> Which is surprising. We feel that the Mulan trailer. At least two no. or three of us feel that the Mulan trailer is... I liked it enough. I mean... I, you, That's some, not enough for me. It's not your... enough for a trailer to be like, oh, okay, that was okay. Yeah. If, especially... I don't know. I just, I, it's just... A, it's only a trailer so far. It, it surprised me a lot but more than I thought it would. the whole story around it yeah. and all of that. It's... I don't Well, you're like... looking into that uh, political stuff a lot more than I am. No, not but, even that. I feel like it's you just... should... <laughs> well, I, I mean, yes, I probably should, but think, just for the movie in general, I was like, the yeah, movie in I general mean, to me, the more these live action Disney remakes come out, the more cynical I get about it because mm-hmm. obviously my big criticism with the Marvel movies was kind of their formulaic approach, but they all ended up being, at least they were quote unquote original stories, you know, or adapted stories, I guess. But these Disney live action things, they're not original, they're you can't really say they're adapted. They're just copies of what they've done before. At least this one's not a shot for shot copy. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, no. that is what I like too. It yeah. seems like it's not. They gonna didn't be cut introduce but it's, the witch character, I, and maybe it's just me. I just don't understand the lasting appeal of these movies. Like, I feel like it, they're capitalizing on people's just like, like blind nostalgia for the originals. Like, I love that movie. Let's go see it again, but it'll be different. But then you, and then what? What do you? What? What stays with you? What? What? What lasts after that? I don't think anything does. I did like in Beauty and the Beast how they gave Beast a song and stuff. Like for some reason that one stayed with me a little bit, but nothing else. None of the others have. I don't know. I just there's Cinderella nothing, and Jungle Book were the same. For Cinderella is a little different because that wasn't really the same story. I mean, it was, but like there was changes. Like yeah, it was big different enough. To it. Yeah. And I mean, I guess there was the Alice in Wonderland <laughs> stuff. Which are totally uh, no, weird. we don't talk about those. <laughs> but uh, Cinderella was the first of this, and little did we know that Disney would be like, "Hey, that kind of worked. Also, Let's no, do this for everything." No one saw this movie, but Pete's Dragon, the remake, is actually pretty good. I do want to see that. I love that director. It's He's actually fantastic. it was weirdly entertaining, and I enjoyed every minute. He's an of it. incredible director. But yeah, well, I felt. But that I, I get what you mean, though. Like Lion King yeah. and some of the shallow. others, they're hollow yeah, cash I grabs. Well, I feel like the. Mulan character in this one is there's nothing dynamic or emotional about her. She's just so reserved that to the point where she looks like a robot or she wet blanket stiff. on screen. And I don't know if that was just the scenes they picked from the trailer where she has to be around her family or if that's just conducive of how the movie's going to be that she's just so like quiet and reserved. Yeah. I don't like how one, they didn't even cut her hair 
to that's like she, the most like, iconic shot of the original yeah, one. yeah it, that's, that's true. where she makes the decisions to literally yes. break away but guys yes. it's herself. different this time you can't do a shot by shot remake I, <laughs> I think in this case it would have been better I don't like how she looks like she wears makeup she's never even dirty nobody's gonna she's believe curled that. that's a guy hair. I don't believe it yeah. they just look closely is that makeup <laughs> you're not fooling anybody no it's suspend your belief there's a witch in this movie <laughs> my luscious curly well my long luscious curly hair is up in a bun yeah. you know just so that like we said i feel like it's just because they want that money shot of her pulling the bow out of her hair and it falls down it's like i am a woman actually right. it's like yeah no, which no. is kind of weird though because like in the anime movie they didn't really have that like there's a shot of her on the roof because yeah, you don't need like, it like flailing the sword it, yeah. and the, the, her hair wasn't flowing out they only find out she's a man because she saves everybody and gets injured and yeah. the doctor finds out yeah that's how it should be I, that's probably how it'll happen too i don't know it's just actually will it happen that way or will she be like guys i'm a woman and then they're like what depends on what the chinese yeah. government want yeah, yeah. <laughs> well maybe i don't huh. know so I was I was more disappointed <laughs> feeling like there was Excuse nothing me. for me to connect to with this character. Like a character that doesn't emote and that just is in the story does nothing for me. Like I want yeah. her dynamic. I want her I don't believe that this is the character that would actually cast off her feminine side and go and join an army. Like there's nothing about her that says she would do that. It's I a, just it's a fair point. I'm just getting annoyed with how formulaic all of these live action remakes are you see yeah. you see the trailer and you have these sweeping epic shots and you have the <laughs> famous music from the original one but it's like now it's like this epic orchestral version it's like every single live action disney movie has had this exact same approach to their trailers and i don't know how you can keep getting excited when you see the same thing done every time i didn't love the idea of the witch either i th- i think it's kind of interesting to make the story different but I don't, the story didn't need a witch and a spell and all the mysticism around it. It I, was. I did wonder about that too, but then a buddy of mine reminded me sure that it's, it's like also folklore. like Mulan is yeah. like based on like some sort of adaptation yeah. before it. So it might be no, that like they're taking story. it from that too, but I'm not familiar. So. I don't think there was a witch in the ancient story. It really is based I, off a story. Maybe. I. But the real story is very tragic. And, right. And Disney changed it up and made it nice, but I like the nice version. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like maybe that's what they're doing here. Because I, I was with you on that too. I yeah. was like, it's so weird that they're trying to make it realistic, but now there's a witch turning into a phoenix dragon thing. And but I don't know, maybe they're to trying me, to base it on that story a little more. Just the hollowness of the Disney live action remake system combined with just the whole political societal drama controversy around it those two together there's it takes you out completely takes me out i don't want to you might not be alone on that i don't want to support this movie i don't think it looks very good so it's not like i'm going it does look good but no i can't do it it's like no i'm not gonna (laughs) see this movie anyways and now i'm especially not gonna see it because of all of that stuff fiery words from eric (laughs) i feel like it's just common like come on at this point, we should like yeah. be aware of what's happening. I feel like they took a really strong, interesting, like exuberant female character and made her really docile and like boring. I hope that's not the case. That's why I feel like they did because that the would trailer. really bum me out while watching. Yeah. That's what the obviously there's not going to be the be a man song, so I'm out. Probably not. Oh yeah, Dad. there's no songs, isn't? There's, there's no songs. Yeah, it's not a musical. I'm thinking like the iconic songs you'll hear in like the scores. Yeah, because that's what they always do. Because that's people cheap. are like, oh my god, I recognize no, that. I <laughs> want, <laughs> I want fighting training. I want be a man. I want her to have fun sidekicks and form real friendships where they protect her in the end because they see past her being a lady. But that would be a shot by shot remake, guys. <laughs> there's no winning here. Ah. Oh. Chinese government doesn't want it. I'm, I <laughs> Men swear. and women can't be friends. I swear. Yeah. They don't want to see a proper, beautiful Chinese woman like have, what's that shot in the original one? Like a bunch of drools that come out of her mouth. Yeah. You know, like stuff oh, like that. Yeah. I bet that's not going to be in there. Well, I, I, if I remember right. She has when, too much of a friendship with a horse that can't happen again. <laughs> when she had, when the original Milan came out, didn't the Chinese government also not like that movie being released? Probably, but yeah. Disney I wasn't. I remember reading somewhere. Disney that was wasn't case. as like 
it was subservient big, to them at that point. And no, it, they I didn't have a, a true market. It, the economy in China and the society in China was so much different in the nineties than it is today. Right. It was super poor, egalitarian. They just didn't even barely have the screen count or anything. So there's a, a lot whole, has changed. Yeah. There's a whole generation of people that just really didn't even grow up with the idea of movie watching. Yeah. Until mm-hmm. recently. Yeah. That's why things like iconic movies like Star Wars and stuff just haven't worked over there because oh, yeah. they don't Star Wars have never the history works of it. In China. Right, right. Well, and it, and the core of Star Wars is rebellion. Yeah, and they don't yeah, like that's that. completely against the, <laughs> <Yeah>. every <laughs> everything the Chinese government wants its people to buy right. into. We do not rebel, but this movie is about rebellion. <laughs> like, don't rebel too much. Yeah, it's literally just called, a little. Yeah. <laughs> that's absolutely what I don't know. I just think the whole thing is gross. And it's not worth it to see a two-hour yeah. generic cash Which grab Disney sad. movie. Because I w- just watched the animated one, Eric. Maybe I will. One of my favorites, and yeah, I was it's a really great movie. Yeah, it is excited really for a live-action mm-hmm. remake. And when they said they were having an all Chinese cast, and it was, I was like, yes, this is. Yeah, gonna I remember be so originally good. that we were all talking about like this is the kind of movie that could make for a good live-action yeah. movie. Yeah. There's these big epic, like, like the war scenes, everybody mm-hmm. clash. You can just like see it. But then I don't know. Again, it's just a trailer. Then they but had to change it. I feel like there's a lot so of red much. flags for myself already. Yeah. And I don't see it getting better. Mm-mm. You know, because this trailer is not that much different than the teaser that came out. And I thought mm-hmm. the teaser was almost a little bit better because it showed more of her action. Yeah. But I still, even when the teaser came out, had a problem with the idea that this girl that looked like 90 pounds was like jumping around going to defeat an army. <laughs> I'm like, No. I just feel like, yeah, I feel like there's going to be a huge disconnect between how she's portrayed because of how the Chinese government is going to make Disney portray her. Right. I feel like there's going to be a big disconnect between her, the kind of person that she's portrayed as and what she's supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. I just don't buy it. No, but we'll probably play it everywhere and... Yes, you probably should, make a everyone lot of money. should still play this movie. Every <laughs> theater should still be playing this. This will make you bank. When does Mulan come out? <laughs> make a stand. Uh, May, March. 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 Wait, right? no. Yeah. I think, Wait, it's, I think March. It, it's two ah. weeks after Onward, isn't that right? Yeah. Onward's the beginning of March and this is at yeah. the end of March. Yeah, March 27th, 2020. Ugh. I think they're trying to put it in that mm-hmm. slot that Beauty and the Beast first came out in. Yeah. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Also, um... The Black Widow movie comes out May 1st, 2020, yeah. and No Time to Die comes out April 10th, 2020. Cool. So we'll have Mulan into No Time into... Probably Black Widow. Black Widow. Yeah. So boom, boom, boom. That should be good. Yeah. Is there any other Disney major blockbuster movies coming out next summer? Oh, will When does Soul check. come out? When does what come out? Soul. Soul. Oh, I thought you said solo. I, it, uh, I think solo it's comes out in November? June. June? It's going to be a summer. I know Onward yeah, I comes there's... out at the beginning of March. Oh, well, we already said yeah. that. It comes out at the beginning of March. What does SSI say? SSI. If you go to the um, film database and you click just Disney, what are the... Sounds like a really convenient system. It is yeah. a very convenient <laughs> system. Y'all should check it out. <laughs> um, it looks like Soul will be... Oh, November 7th. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I feel like it's... Wait, no. That's not right. That's when we last updated things. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Um, I don't know how to use the whole, our own system. It's June 19th, okay. 2020. What's coming out in November? Do they have an animated Thanksgiving title next I'm year? I'm sure Disney the animated company has a movie. Cause... Yes, they do. It's Raya and the Last Dragon. Okay. Which that one I'm actually pretty excited for. It looks to be I've a cool movie. That. I've heard of it. I haven't seen anything on it. Um, okay. I'll show you guys something so about it So Soul later. is going to take the time slot like Incredibles and and Dory did. Mm-hmm. Kind of that. tried and, and uh, summer and true yeah. dates. They know what spots to put in. Yeah. They've seen the success. Okay. Interesting. And we don't, we only have Black Widow next year, right? For Marvel. Isn't That's Eternals? what it looks like. I thought the Eternals oh, Eternals might be November too. I think. Eternals yes, it is. is November, November 6th okay. as of now. But it seems like they're on schedule with shooting that, so they should be able to make that just fine. Live action Disney remakes and more Marvel movies. I don't like that. 
we're not going to get Star Wars next year. I wonder so what happy. they're going to do at Christmas. So happy. <laughs> get out of there, Star Wars. You don't want to be. You don't want to be associated with them any longer. Whatever. <laughs> get out You're of there. You're going to cry because they're going to have a Baby Yoda movie in two years. Oh, and I'll see it in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this article about how it said that they weren't anticipating the like love of Baby Yoda, and so they didn't have any merchandise ready. And no, so yeah, they're critically. Way. So people are making their own no. toys. Oh yeah, no, there's pre-orders for the merchandise, and it's like this will be available May 25th. Yeah, because like we didn't really anticipate that. No, well, because way. they wanted to keep it a secret. Because right. Star Wars is notorious for their spoilers via their merchandise and their toys. Yeah. And John Favreau's like, let's hold off on the toys until the show actually comes out and people see him for the first time. And at that point, it was like scrambling to reach the demand. Because yeah. all there is now are just like crappy shirts with like prints of Baby, Baby Yoda concept art. It's like, no, people want the plushies. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, Fall asleep I with do. at night. Mm hmm the only thing i want right now i want a baby yoda funko pop oh they're coming for my collection they're 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 on the way i love that a couple of months ago we were all like disney plus blah now we're like give me all the baby yoda merch (laughs) hey baby yoda it was unprecedented nobody could anticipate Mm. how irresistible he is i wonder who came i didn't expect him to show that's for sure who's getting the pat on the back for coming up with a baby yoda concept i think it's john favreau Favreau. yeah Yeah. He I mean, get... he wrote. He's written every episode of that show so far. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I think, think he wrote so. all of them. I think so. Maybe he, minus one or two. They didn't go but... to him and be like, "We want to introduce a baby Yoda." No, he was just he was like, like, "Well, I read another interview, and he's like, because I think the idea of the Mandalorian escorting yeah. a young child was in his head first, and then he's like, what could we use?'" And he's like, "Well, we don't know anything about the Yoda species. Let's make a baby Yoda." And then he's like, "Can you make? Can you design a baby Yoda?" It's like, oh, yes, we can. <laughs> they crack their knuckles. Let's oh. get the work, boys. <laughs> Something, who would have expected the cutest thing in the world is simultaneously like the oldest looking thing, but he's like right. a little baby. It's genius. I got to see the new episode, see if there's any more quality Baby Yoda memes. I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> They're always coming. Be on the lookout for Baby Yoda memes. What's our new release this weekend? I think it's just Playmobil. Playmobil, which is <laughs> being distributed by STX after um, it got pushed out. I can't remember the oh, backstory, but it's so been many pushed times. around. Until oh, like, <laughs> we didn't have until a Until like a, a week yeah. ago, I was still not convinced it was even coming out. Yeah. Uh, the Darkwater movie with Mark Ruffalo. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's uh, distributed expanding. by Focus, Focus Features. That should also be wide officially, or at least wider. Yep. That is yeah, expanding this I week. Don't. I don't think either one's going to do that much because no. Frozen 2 is just too, it's just still king of the world Yeah, right now. I think Dark Water is, uh, is only going to work in certain areas. It's definitely, st- while it's expanding, it's definitely just limited certain niche markets. Yeah, it's one of those movies kind of like The Post or um, yeah. Spotlight. It's, a, yeah. it's an important true story, but not necessarily the most exciting movie for and a lot of people. And that's something you want to always watch at the holidays. Yeah. Is there usually a lull at the box office after yes. um, this first and second? Oh, yeah, everybody holds on to their good stuff for Christmas. Yeah, yeah the they first and second week of December because people are busy shopping, yep. Christmas yeah. shopping, so they're not so those weekends are notoriously yep. kind of weak, weaker than what you would think for this time. Yeah, and, and they're then, just letting the big the big guys from Thanksgiving hold over yeah. yeah hold over and then um and then everybody gears up for all the new releases coming out at christmas because it's not only the big tent poles to capitalize on the christmas break of kids being off but it's also everybody trying to get in for oscar nominations yeah, and award more prestigious yeah. smaller yeah so it just is a run movies. at the end of the year mm-hmm. run on the screens uh, Playmobil is doing this thing, I think, where their tickets are cheaper. Yeah, they're doing like a I didn't five even know dollar. That until a few days ago. Yeah, same. Uh, I just family heard about it. ticket thing. So, oh, really? Yeah, just try, try to. You're out Christmas shopping. You want to take the kids to a movie. They're doing a five dollar ticket for it. I feel like they're gonna make no money off this thing. Well, no, but they weren't gonna make money to begin with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we might as well try to get the most people in with this deal. And I thought Playmobil looked kind of interesting, like for kids I, uh, I did, did you not. though mm-hmm. i did not a all right <laughs> Playmobil has always just been like the sadder legos oh god that's exactly what it is it's like and they're even more expensive than legos they as a never, kid i thought they were so lame they look so bad it's like a store called Those the learning tree awful. in the mall yeah. that i would go into and had like more educational toys 
it would have Legos, and then you see Playmobil, and it's like they're kind of like Legos, but you yeah. don't really build them. No, and they just are dumb. And they're just <laughs> dumb. Yeah, I can't think of. I mean, this movie looked like a way less bad version of the Emoji movie to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even gonna matter. No one's gonna know that this movie came out. I know. Sad, sad we to keep say. Keep forgetting. It's. I, I don't know. It's just. Some toys don't work like Lego does, and Playmobil is definitely one of them. Like I know we like recognize Playmobil. I don't know if kids nowadays. I wouldn't have recognized what... that it was something yeah. different. Yeah, that's they okay. Suck. So next, bummer for them, but next week we've got Jumanji next level. That'll yeah, be Jumanji the big one. next level. Black Christmas, Bombshell, Richard Jewell. Oh yeah, Bombshell already kind Unco- of snuck up. Is Uncut Gems? No, that's, that's as limited. It's, it's limited, release. and then it expands on Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay, that I'm gonna try and see that on Christmas Day. That is my what a that Christmas. is my perfect Christmas What's movie. A, what a oh gift gosh. for us! <laughs> oh my god, awesome oh. job, A24. Not Star Wars for the third time. I'll see them both. Oh, he'll have seen it twelve <laughs> probably, times. Yeah, I gotta already. keep up. I gotta see it at least seven times. You're not gonna go to Little Women or Spies in Disguise. I'm not going to Spies in Disguise. I'm super excited for Little Women, though. Yeah, I'll be taking uh, my mom, I think, to that one. So, Oh, I will be not seeing any of them. Because <laughs> I think... Nice. Ken, you know what's funny is Ken, my husband, was like, oh, we should go see Little Women. That looks like a movie you'd like. <laughs> I'm like, no, they look annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like just because it's period doesn't was mean he, I'm gonna like it. Saying a timeless this story. No, he it's was serious. Story. That's so weird because I'm like I Greta don't Gerwig? think you would. I mean, it looks like a no. nice. Uh, well, looks like it is kind yeah. of a nice movie, but yeah. I can't at the same can't. time, though, it definitely does seem like up your alley. No, so. I think they all look annoying. In yeah, it, so I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I think it might be nominated for best picture. I would. I wouldn't oh, be surprised. I could see yeah. it. Yeah, I think it could. I, I don't know if it deserves it. We'll find out, but. Florence Pugh will probably be nominated for supporting actress. Oh yeah, and it's but a she should be nominated for Midsommar. Wonderful. She should be nominated for everything because she's amazing. Film. Well, that's true too. It's just not my kind of movie. Yeah. Hmm. I just think it looks very sweet. That's yeah. like obviously a Christmas time movie. Right. For, no, I'll be seeing. Sure. I'll be prioritizing. That'd be a good one. Smart to by take, Sony to release that at Christmas. That'd be a good one to take mom or grandma to, for sure. Yeah, apparently. Just I not just this mom. It was myself. my idea. Yeah. <laughs> if I can have like a back to back to back to back like days of uncut gems, Little Women, Star Wars again, Star Wars again, yeah, Star Wars again, you know that would be a great. That would be <laughs> a great back, Christmas to back, time. To back. <laughs> well, oh. I am trying to hold off on Star Wars, not on the December twentieth, but seeing it on the twenty eighth, which is my birthday. So I'm telling that's you, that's eight a mistake because it could days. be Force Awakens all over again. You're gonna have to lock God sat by Han Solo's death. You're gonna have to go totally offline. I'm Don't leave the to. house. Don't be around no, other people. She's probably gonna go to my cabin and hang out until. Just, yeah, that's seclude just yourself move. in the cabin. Yeah. For a week. And then come, come back. back. Would this be a movie Put you wouldn't blinders. mind having things spoiled to? Oh, they can't ruin it any worse than they do with Force Awakens, so I'm good. All right. <laughs> I mean, who are they going to kill? Who is left? Um, that I Lando. Really... Leia. Lando looks like he's about ready to, <laughs> to go. Leia, we know, goes, so I'm already prepared for that. Well, I don't know no, if she goes. Um, she probably goes. C-3PO probably goes. She that one will be a sad. little sad, but so I'm kind of prepared for that i was so unprepared the trailer probably prepared you yeah you didn't think they were gonna kill han and force awaken uh no i knew wow. that <laughs> in no, my mind i was like there is a hundred and ten percent chance no. either when han or chewie that, or both of them when he walks in into movie. that chamber i'm like oh he's done yeah no I'm, he's a goner i was like they would never kill an original cast <laughs> person i knew how han, that's like so obvious has been dying to be killed in a star wars yes movie. No. He grabbed JJ by the throat and said, please kill me. I'm not going to be in any more of these. <laughs> please just do it. I don't want my family back. <laughs> Get off my plane. Sorry. <laughs> they all just blur together after a while. <laughs> no. So that was, was the not. most obvious thing to me. And that's why, that's my least favorite part of Force Awakens. I love the fact that he died because it's a powerful moment and it had to happen. But it was just so telegraphed. No, it wasn't. Yes, Some of us missed no, it, that. Literally, when I in just the theater, said, you walk, he walks in. Did you and not like, know he was going to die until he was literally impaled? <laughs> are you kidding me? I had no clue. No oh. clue. There are a few things. There are a few things in cinema history more 
obvious than <laughs> Han Solo being killed. No, that's why I was so devastated. I did not see that coming. I, that blows me away. I don't understand. Not at all. And usually I'm really good uh, about picking up on those things. Or I find out the ending ahead of time, so I'm never, ever caught off guard. That whole scene of him and Chewie putting up the charges, I was like, okay, we're getting close. One of these guys were both yeah, are there dying. Happen. And then he, even beforehand, but when he goes, Ben! In like the saddest, crackiest old man voice. It was so sad. I was like, oh, it's on. It was it was a powerful. It's on. Really? That was the part? Like be- I keep saying before, when he walks in there, I'm like. No, I know. It's, it's, I knew it. It's but <laughs> until Harrison did that between either him, Chewie, or both, I was like, okay, it's just going to be Han. Yeah. Because, like, come on. You know they're going to kill off somebody in this, in Force Awakens. They yeah. have to have that big moment that people are going to talk about. No. Yes. Well, Cody no. doesn't want to talk about it. So but... obvious. <laughs> Oh, it was horrible. It was not obvious. I'm just saying, just I'm just saying, maybe just remember that so for your birthday. So I looked at all of the characters, and I'm like, yes, all of you may <laughs> perish, and I will be fine. There's not. All right. I mean, I'm excited. I'm really excited right. to see who dies, but I think it's going to be still be really sad. Hopefully, the only other one I didn't want to die was Luke Skywalker, and he died in Last Jedi. So I was like, yeah, but well, he's still there. Force <sighs> goes. Oh, I, God, wanted... I love those force ghosts. No, I wanted real life Luke Skywalker. This is an no. This is an even more perfect form. With the green lights. This is where he belongs. All dressed in black. Ha! Huh, that's my Luke Skywalker. That is a good Luke. That's my favorite. My favorite Luke is the outfit he's in when he fights Darth Vader for the first time. That like tan jumpsuit kind of thing with his yeah. pistol, fighting, sneaking down yeah. the halls of Cloud City. That's mm-hmm. my Luke. What's your Luke, actually Kyle? old man Luke is my favorite Luke, but I was gonna say I <laughs> dead Luke, I like dead the character it just... disappeared Luke is your favorite Luke. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna like Force Ghost Luke. That's yeah. gonna be my favorite one. <laughs> he probably will be the best Luke, like old Han. It's probably best Han. Hot take. Is I, don't it? I don't know. All <laughs> Han, all, there's no such thing as a bad Han. I like Han and Emperor Strikes Back. He's very. That's very good. Yeah, Where that he is. Yeah, is like. Tell him Leia off. Be like, you're in love with me. You just won't admit it. You're afraid I was going to leave without giving you a goodbye kiss. Yeah. Just frustrated. And he's the like, I'm out of here. I could line. use a good kiss. Yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I was like, jeez. <laughs> okay. I like, Is this what adults talk about? Does he want a kiss about? or not? But then at <laughs> the end, know. he's so stoic when he goes in the mm-hmm. machine and he's just worried about her. He's so good. And Eddie's still cocky. I know. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's probably the best oh, Star Wars is almost over. <laughs> But thank goodness, too. We don't oh, know. Just get it out of here. <laughs> okay. Well, Star Wars is almost gone. Thank God. <laughs> cool. Speaking of Star Wars, we have some super awesome character one sheets up on Silver Screen Insider to yeah, download. Like, show off like in your retro lobby. Retro trading cards. Yeah. And Kyle, take us away. <laughs> uh yeah so those posters as well as many other posters for many other upcoming movies yeah. are up on our database that is at silverscreeninsider.com if you're a theater owner or manager in need of uh some assistance to get your uh theater just boosting a bit more we're here to help for you uh, and please check out our podcast there as well as on many other uh <laughs> podcast platforms isn't that yes. right cody yes many Most other on <laughs> many on numerous many- many others yeah. and if you ever want to check out the upcoming slates of different studios like we did today on the podcast with disney you just head over to the film database go to the filters and click the, which studio you like mm-hmm. and the release schedule will automatically populate with that studio's movies it's that simple the convenience yep. <laughs> it's off the charts <laughs> it's off the charts <laughs> but yeah that's all we got for today Kay. have a good weekend see ya take it easy Bye.